OES Dragon's Breath, Tuesday, December 4th, 2706, 901 AM. See to it that all duties are properly distributed between returning and new personnel. Legion Commander Max Kanza ordered upon entering the tactical center with his second in command, both of them in the black uniforms of fleet officers with the red across the chest and yellow stripes over the shoulders. The other man took his place at the appropriate console and began his work, but his thoughts were elsewhere. We are stronger than ever and the Valens are falling before us with no hope of stopping us. Our new emperor is doing extremely well, especially given his young age. Legion Captain Tony Farah commented. The commander said nothing as he focused on ensuring the recently conquered Grilk system was fully secure, unwilling to trust their position and safety to the apathy of its residents. Farah could be overly optimistic, but he was a true believer in the Ordonian cause, and such people always had their uses. Incoming communication from Ordios, Legion Commander. Communications reported from the bridge. He told them to relay it to the tactical center, then faced the main screen on the wall and came to attention while Fira remained out of sight behind his workstation. What are my orders? He asked when Knight Commander Lines appeared on screen in his gray uniform suit. A Star Knight giving orders to regular military was an abomination, but Kanza made a point to maintain his dispassionate exterior that revealed no trace of the disgust he felt. As the Emperor's elite security service, the Knights were outside the military's chain of command, but since the primary had died in battle with the previous Emperor, and the secondaries dismissed from their positions shortly afterward, Emperor Johann was using them to relay his orders. A squadron will arrive shortly to garrison the Grilk system in your stead. You are to take your legion and destroy the Velen fleet stationed at Narsal. Lines dictated. There was a scarcely audible gasp from Fyra's location behind the Legion commander, but he offered no reaction of his own. That fleet is their primary defense for their homeworld and surrounding systems, and the system contains many military installations. It is impossible for a single Legion to invade it. It was also deep behind enemy lines, but reaching it wasn't a concern, only what to do once he arrived. Your objective is not to invade the system, only to destroy the fleet by any means at your disposal. Do not attempt to seize the territory. Understood. Is there anything else? Return to your home base when finished. That is all. Lines concluded, then cut the connection. We don't have the numbers or firepower to challenge that fleet. Farah blurted after stepping into the open. Prepare for the changeover. I want the Legion ready to debark within three hours of our relief's arrival. Kanza ordered as he approached an auxiliary screen to the left of the center walkway. He called up the Narsal system and displayed all information on its military assets, filling the screen with blue dots and a column of green text on the right. It was an impressive collection of ships and troops, but success was possible and he wouldn't settle for anything less. Saturday, December 8th, 2706. 4.32 p.m. The bridge's main screen showed three green four-pointed stars against a map grid rapidly approaching the Narsal system as Legion Commander Kanza watched from the captain's chair, his hands resting in his lap and eyes intently watching. Attack squadrons report ready, sir. Farah relayed the report, and Kanza nodded to signal them to proceed. Two of the squadrons came out of hyperspace and engaged the Velan ships already waiting for them thanks to their early warning system. The mass of red icons of various shapes nearly enveloped the two stars, but both of them managed to break through. One turned back and maintained engagement with the first set of defenders, but the second continued on and headed for the planet Narsal itself. More defenders broke orbit to intercept and quickly stopped the intruders a safe distance from the planet. Kanza watched as his outnumbered forces began to crumble under the enthusiastic defense, but patiently bided his time. Now, he finally said. The third squadron bypassed the fighting and entered normal space dangerously close to the planet, but they pulled off the maneuver without incident. The larger ships opened fire on the remaining defenders in orbit as half a dozen bomber squadrons descended into the atmosphere with their fighter escorts. Ground-based fighters scrambled in response, but only managed to intercept four of the squadrons. The remaining two made it through and destroyed their targets 
one of which was the oldest military academy in the entire Velen Union, then all of them sped away with the defenders hot on their tail. The bombers and fighters docked with their host craft, then all Ordonian forces fled the system. The red icons on Kansas' screen disappeared when his ships entered hyperspace, but nearly half of them reappeared seconds later in pursuit of those who had dared attack them. 6.59 p.m. Prepare for battle, the Legion commander ordered as the ships approached his location. The lights dimmed as power was transferred to the combat systems, and half the main screen changed to a visual view. The rest of his fleet awaited the action near a red dwarf star with no planets not far from the Narsal system. Since the Velans were stretched thin in the war, they were only patrolling it every few days with the belief the Imperials would never get this far into their territory anyway. Understandable, but foolish. His attack ships appeared and immediately consolidated into a tight defensive formation. Then the Valen ships showed up and surrounded them, but didn't fire. They likely intended to demand their surrender. Execute, Kanza ordered. Two-thirds of the fleet suddenly dropped out of hyperspace on either side of the enemy, as the remaining third with the dragon's breath at its head sped away from the star to close the remaining gap. He wasn't going to ask them to surrender. Fire at will. The visual display lit up with the white light of plasma bolts and the blue of missiles as the Ordonians rained down death on their enemy, then red joined the spectacle as the Velans returned fire but to a far lesser extent. They desperately tried to turn to get a better firing position, but it was too late for that, and soon orange fireballs were added to the color show. When most of the enemy ships were destroyed, Kanza ordered the three attack squadrons plus one more from the fleet to stay behind and finish the job, then had the rest regroup and set course for Narsal. Do you still think we can't do this? He remarked to Fyra after the display changed to the milky colors of hyperspace. No. I now believe this will be one of the most spectacular victories of this war. Thursday, January 31st, 2707. 749 AM. The Royal Palace loomed over Max Kanza in his full dress uniform as he walked up the tree-lined marble path, its red stone and wood walls and colonnaded entrance filling him with pride and satisfaction, although he dared not show this to the armored knights on patrol. His service to the Empire had not gone unnoticed, and now he would have the opportunity to do even more. He ascended the twelve steps, entered via the wide-open doors, then passed through the security station after which he was told to wait in a side lobby. A herald dressed in a dark yellow suit came through the wooden door on the other side a couple minutes later and told him to follow. They entered a large hallway where ten star knights stood guard, one on each door leading to the lobby, and four on either side of the currently open four-and-a-half-meter-tall doors. The two of them traversed the thick red carpet between fourteen pairs of gold columns, in between each of which stood more knights, and approached the throne dais where another legion commander already stood with his hands clasped behind his back. His dress uniform with its dark green jacket, red shirt, and black pants with the red stripe on the outside mirrored Kansas' own. When he came up beside the other man, Kanza recognized him as Raz Vinton, the commander of the invasion of Vela, who had managed to secure nearly the entire planet, only to suffer a horrendous defeat upon attacking the final stronghold. Do you know this man's identity? Emperor Johan asked from atop the dais after the herald introduced Kanza. His four personal guards with their ceremonial armor and shields stood at each corner, but the empress was not present. The emperor normally wore a set of robes unique to his office, but today he was dressed in the royal military uniform with its dark red pants, double-breasted jacket with brass buttons, and black combat boots. There was also a pistol holstered at his right hip. This was not a good sign. Yes, majesty. Are you aware of his recent failure? I am. Do you know how many soldiers died in that attack? The exact number has yet to be reported, sire. The reason for that is because we are still recovering their bodies from the field while avoiding enemy fire, but we know that this man sent over 20,000 to their deaths. That was the number Kanza had heard, but there was no question in the last statement so he did not respond. The Emperor looked from him to the other Legion commander, then drew his pistol and with perfect aim shot the man in the face. 
Kanza did not flinch at the gunshot, nor the sound of the body hitting the floor, and kept a steady gaze on his liege. I am placing you in command of the Velan siege. You will conduct yourself with the same excellence as your last mission, the Emperor decreed as he holstered his weapon. I understand, Majesty, Kanza responded with a bow. I will not be disappointed again. You're dismissed. Don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications so you will always see when I upload a new video. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where you will see more of my original content. Links in the description below.